It really heartens um, me to see young people they're standing up for social justice and stuff that we didn't e- weren't even aware of because I think each generation pushes it further and further and it's the thing that gives me hope, you know. Wolf walkers transform into wolves when they sleep. Where would you go and what would you do at night if you were a wolf walker? Running as fast as you could would be good. And you probably want to go and scare a few people as well. I like to try out all the powers as well. Like I heard a podcast recently about how the world is so different for canines that they can even smell like into the past. Like they can smell things that happened and stuff like that. Yeah, it's really, I'd I'd be fascinated to know. What was that? Like like. they can smell something five kilometers away. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. And the hearing and stuff too. Yeah, it's interesting, right? We can come out now. We can smell ya, you stick. You're a uh, wolf walker. You're a wolf when you sleep. <gasps> a girl when you're awake. <laughs> Robin, something's happened to me. Yeah, I can see that. Flipping great. Wolf Walkers doesn't flinch from showing England's oppression of Ireland, but also has an English girl, Robin, as a positive main character. What can Robin and Maeve's friendship teach us about overcoming our differences? Yeah, that was the whole point of, of trying to have those characters like that. And we thought it was important if we were going to set it in that time period that the main character would be an English girl. And that her and Maeve as the two main characters, I hope, are a model for how we should really be seeing people that we feel like we're in a silo. Like cause the problem with the world at the moment is especially if you look at the states and everything like that obviously ireland everywhere is that people kind of end up in these little encampments where they can't see the world from the point of view of, of the other yeah and so mm-hmm. the the whole idea is that when robin okay she had there's some magic involved you know she, but she's able to see the world from the point of view of, of another species never mind other people and that was something that was a really important theme for us and me i think it's more yeah, important than ever yeah yeah because it's all about um you know overcoming the the ideology that's stuck in your head from birth from society and from what like the leaders are telling you that like this is the enemy this is the thing you should be afraid of and it takes to to walk in your enemy's shoes or to live as they do or to even just really get to know one of the enemy to realize that they're yeah. they're just like you and they can be your friend mm-hmm. you know whether it's up in the north or whether it's in the states or whether it's anywhere you know the people that you're told are the enemy they don't need to be mm-hmm. yeah yeah. The art style of the animation was very unique and really stood out to me. It is so visually enchanting that your imagination flows as you're guided through the Blissful Forest. Personally, it made the film feel very Irish to me. Did you find inspiration for the art style and if so, where? We were inspired by like graphic novels and comics and um, old fine art painters and, and in terms of animation, like uh, films like The Tale of Princess Kaguya and the old uh, Disney films of like uh, 101 Dalmatians and Robin Hood and Winnie the Pooh and a lot of those old films that really took pride in the in the hand-drawn aspect of it, you know, that they were kind of adventurous in their, in their treatment of like real media using watercolour and gouache underneath sketchy lines and stuff like that. I think it was a a big thing as well to make it look Irish with the lighting and with the colours in the forest and all, because Mm. a lot of the artists were from Spain and France and even Brazil. Yeah, they were were making some beautiful concept art at the start and Thomas said, we're going, yeah, it's really gorgeous, but it looks like it's way too warm and sunny to be Ireland. (laughs) It needs to be cold and wet and damp. I feel like the art style does actually um, highlight that it's from an older era as well. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully it's more timeless, yeah. Yeah. It's weird to see a time when children are put hard to work. We see Robin in the scullery scrubbing away. What else did you discover about what life was like for young people back then? That was tired. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. <laughs> they didn't really have a concept of, of, of children's rights it was more class-based whether or not children kind of even had a childhood yeah even my my mother was saying that like back in in uh, 1960s ireland even there wasn't a concept of teenage years that she went from being a child to being an adult yeah and there was no such thing as like teenage clothes uh yeah. there was no time to be a teenager you just as soon as you could work you would go out and work and so that's only that's only back in the 60s so back yeah, in the 1650s, yeah. it would have been way harder. And I think like, you know, there's so many stories of children working down in the mines, children being forced to go up like chimneys to sweep <laughs> chimneys out, all that kind of stuff. Like as soon as you could earn money, I think people were trying to make you 
go out and earn money, even if you were four or five years old. Hearing those stories, I feel so lazy as a kid now, to be honest. <laughs> well, <laughs> just feel lucky, just feel lucky, yeah. not lazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wolfwalkers is set in the past, but has a lot of issues that are relevant today. Protecting nature and the environment, respecting independence and people's differences, and listening to young people. What did you want audiences to take away from watching this film? Yeah, you just said it. All those themes. I'm so <laughs> delighted. I'm so delighted you got it because that's what we were hoping would come across without it being too preachy or didactic. We wanted to tell an entertaining story that was interesting and very watchable and and fun. But at the same time, those were the themes that we wanted to touch on, you know. And I suppose the thing about a young person finding their space in the world, it, you know, it's classic to tell the story of that age where you're kind of going from being a child into, into teenage or adulthood and you have to kind of question yourself in society. But I think that's a transition that we shouldn't feel is over and done with once we become a teenager or an adult. It's a constant uh, battle that we all have to live through the rest of our lives. And those transitions, I hope, are... You know, you want to show something positive, like if you lean into the, the change that you're going through and you lean into the stuff that you're starting to understand and believe rather than trying to fit in too much into a society that's oppressive, but standing up for what you know is right. It really heartens yeah. me to see young people, they're standing up for social justice and stuff that we didn't e weren't even aware of, because I think each generation pushes it further and further. And it's the thing that gives me hope, you know. I feel like uh, for people who watch the film and don't notice these themes, they still kind of learn the lesson subconsciously. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. I hope so, Casper. I hope it's yeah. part, like, people don't need to go away and, and feel, like, that's the nice thing about storytelling, I think. People, it'll resonate for people what they're going through. And I've seen different minority groups react to it as though it's about them, which I thought was nice because it's a, a broad enough allegory that people can relate to it where, where they're at and what they feel is, is about it for them. Mm -hmm.